Hi everybody, welcome back to the Metastyle YouTube channel. My name is Maria Korolov and today we're going to be testing out Claude AI for book editing and comparing it to ChatGPT's code interpreter. So, got my, my microphone here. Okay, got my files. All right, so uh, Claude AI came out um, today from Anthropic. Anthropic uh, is a company with $1.5 billion worth of investment, a few hundred million of it from Google. It's a competitor to OpenAI's ChatGPT. Um, it prides itself on being a constitutional AI, so it has better ethics and morals. Um, the company does not use your prompts for training data by default. So if you upload a bunch of text to Claude, it will not use it for training data. And um, it can take uh, files of up to 100,000 tokens, which is 75,000 words in length. Um, but uh, ChatGPT also has a way to upload big files. It's called, called Code Interpreter. And I just got access to it this week as well. And I have tried them both out. So um, everybody already probably has uh, ChatGPT. If you're watching this, um, for Claude AI, I'm going to show you what the login screen looks like. Okay, so here it is. You go to Claude.ai. This gives you an anthropic website. You have this, uh, you can sign in with your email address or you can continue with Google. I signed in with Google. It took me a few seconds and I was in. It's free. And so far I haven't been able to hit the free usage limits. I've uploaded a couple of books and asked a whole bunch of questions. I assume there will be limits. It says there are some limits with a free plan, but I don't know what they are yet. It's also only available in the United States and the UK. So now let's go through and um, I'm gonna show you what you can do with Code Interpreter. And then I'm gonna show you what you can do with Claude AI. All right, so let's share our screen again. And here we go. So this is um, the code interpreter from ChatGPT. So um, the way it works is you have this, uh, the, your name with uh, the three dots there, you go to settings, you go to beta features and you turn on code interpreter, all right? So that's how you get it. And then there's, um, once you're in a code interpreter, see the send a message button, there will plus here. That's where you can upload a file. All right. So I uploaded a text file, um, my first novel, Crim Times. Um, and I asked it to summarize this book. And it said it's a novella, part of the Crim World series. This is stuff from the Amazon description of it. Um, it couldn't actually summarize the whole book itself. So it said that it can identify a general sense of the book's content based on the text in it. And then identified basically a list of common words in the book. And so the analysis it gave me is that it looks like the book uh, revolves around these two characters and they interact with these three other characters and the world where grid pops up a lot. So totally useless. So then I said, all right, please create a list of all the named in, names in the book. Um, so when I went back and forth with it, I, I mean, it took me a few tries to get to this point when I figured out what a named entity was. So it couldn't give me a list of all the characters in the book, but basically it could give me a list of the capitalized words. So it started running a Python library to to do natural language analysis. It failed. It tried different, different approaches, apologized for the errors. And finally, it gave me a list of capitalized words, words like, like Bill. Okay. That is a name, but zoning groups, thanks, something. I mean, random words that were capitalized in this book gave me a list of a few hundred of these 
common capitalized words. Then it did a little bit of frequency analysis for me. And um, I asked it for a description of each character. And the best it could do was pull out individual sentences that had the name of the character in it, but it couldn't really pick out the ones that have a description in it. Like here, for example, it says, I'll have the day special, uh, Trask said, or we are, we are, Trask said. So um, it made some conclusions about this, but it's it's very general kind of inferences that are not very useful at all. Um, so then I, just out of curiosity, I asked it to do a word frequency analysis of the book, excluding the words the and and. Um, and it gave me a list of uh, words that included things like abbreviation, like LL. Um, and so I had it, it, it did this uh, chart. I asked it to redo it without using the words like VE and M and RE and did without the T at the end. So like weird abbreviations. Um, so I asked it to fix that. It went back and it refixed it and redid the analysis. It gave me a little word cloud. I asked it to make brighter colors and it gave me brighter colors. So the bottom line here is that it can do statistical analysis. Um, so you can see how often the particular word is used in the book. That's pretty limited. It's it's so limited as to be almost useless. Um, I've asked it to give a chapter by chapter summary and it says, I'm sorry for any confusion, but as an AI language model, I don't have the ability to read and understand books like a human can. All right, so um, pretty useless. Basically, if you wanna use ChatGPT right now to summarize books, you're gonna to have to upload like a scene or a chapter uh, at a time, and they have to be pretty short to stay within ChatGPT's uh, window, which is pretty small. And now, let us go on to Claude. So for Claude, um, you go to Claude.ai, um, you log in. Um, like I said earlier, I logged in with, um, with Google. Then you can start a new chat, or you can go back to a previous chat. Um, or you can search past chats, which is fantastic. Google, I mean, ChatGPT does not currently have a way to search past chats. So I love that. Um, so it gave me some ideas for what to do. Um, but basically, let me talk you through what I've done so far. Um, so for example, um, I uploaded um, the book Crim. And here you upload it by clicking this little um, paperclip button. And then I asked, uh, give, what are the main characters of the book? Uploaded um, the text. And it gave me the character name and look the description and what he does. The character name, the description and what he does. The character's name, a description and what she does. Uh, character's name, um, description and what he's doing there. So this is super, super useful. If you like me, I write like these long books and forget how you spelled the characters, where they work, uh, what they look like. Maybe it's just me, but um, this could be super useful for you. Or if you are an editor analyzing somebody else's book, this is a great place to start. And also while it was added, it gave me a list of the key events in the book. Uh, so I asked it, what's the single best thing I can do to make this book more readable? And it gave me a, a you know some generic advice. Um, it also said increased clarity, which kind of caught my attention. And so I asked, what section needs the most help with clarity? And it, it identified a section, chapter five, where there's a fire. And it gave me some suggestions for 
things that could use some explanation. So, and these are good points. Those are all valid points, but they're not exactly accurate. So where it says Seymour runs out screaming the word fire, it doesn't actually happen in chapter five. It happens in the last sec last couple of paragraphs of chapter four. Um, then uh, when the chief says she might have been delivering papers, it's not the chief who's saying this. It's another character who's saying it. The chief is referred to in the previous paragraph. So I can see how it made that mistake. Um, but um, other than that, it's it's a reasonable suggestion. So overall, I'd say it's 90 to 95% accurate. Do not expect it to be 100% accurate right now. I'm sure the accuracy will improve. All the AI platforms are working on improving their accuracy, but this was really, really good. I asked it for some of the main themes in the book, and this I feel is excellent. If you're an editor looking at an, analyzing a book, it it accurately ac uh, analyzed all the themes in this book and it responded pretty much instantaneously. Um, probably by the time you're you're trying it out, it will be slowing down a little bit because a lot of people are gonna be using it. So it identified the themes of virtual versus reality, of community. This this is a set, this book is set in a virtual world. Uh, the economics uh, that are at work in this virtual world, from land prices to trade to tourism. If any of you are fans of Second Life, this is kind of what it's based on. Um, the question of immersion versus escapism, the question of nostalgia, because it's a medieval setting, the question of belonging, because people feel like they belong in this world and uh, consider it a home in contrast to their alienation in the real world, and the question of morality. Is it okay to kill people in the virtual world when they don't really die? So uh, this is totally spot on. This is excellent analysis of what's happening in my book. And this is not something that Claude could just have gathered online somewhere because like this book uh, isn't freely available online. All right. Um, so this then it gave me a scene by scene outline of the key events in this book, which is accurate. Um, I asked for a list of all the locations mentioned in the book and their descriptions. It gave that to me. Uh, what's the main character's character arc? It got it correctly. Are there any plot holes in the story? And yes, there are plot holes in the story and Claude finds them. And I'm really embarrassed that this story, which was published, has these plot holes in it. But they're minor plot holes. It, it, Claude says, other than these minor inconsistencies, the plot holds together pretty well overall. Thank you, Claude. I appreciate that. Are there any places where the character motivations are unclear? Overall, they are quite clear. However, there are a couple of places where they are not fully fleshed out. And there's, and then he gives me, or it gives me various places where uh, the motivations aren't 100% clear. And again, it is accurate. And again, I am embarrassed to be sharing this in public. Um, this is the part that I really like. I said, is there anything more I can do to give each character a distinctive voice? For example, for each major character, can you suggest some ways that the dialogue can be more reflective of their personalities and goals? Now, to make these suggestions, Claude, first of all, has to know all the main characters in the book. It has to understand what their personalities are like and understand what their goals are like and their character arcs. And it... it it got it. Um, it suggests that Trask focus more on food and complaints about exertion. And he is a lazy guy who likes to eat a lot. That's ac accurate. Um, it's it suggested some some ways that I can have the Baron talk, and again, it is appropriate for his personality. It suggested some ways for Seymour to talk. Again, I I, I would actually disagree with this one um i might have it suggest some other alternatives to that um 
And um, uh, so, yeah, the, all of these are right. Um, again, I would say it's 90, 95% spot on. It's not perfectly accurate, but it's pretty good. I asked it to look for grammar problems and identify my most common problems. So it said that there's some comma issues, some run on sentences, misplaced modifiers. This um, is not accurate. So for example, it mentioned the phrase exceedingly slow and painful, but when I actually searched my uh, document for that phrase, it wasn't misused in the way Claude thinks it was misused. Uh, similarly, the subject verb disagreement, sentences like the clues was mostly useless. When I actually searched for it, it said the clues were useless. So I had it right in the text. Claude misread that. Um, so it makes mistakes when, when you want to drill down into very detailed specifics. Again, I expect this to improve over time. So I asked it if it was able to create charts or graphs because Code Interpreter over on ChatGPT is very good at creating charts and graphs. And it said that it can do all these charts, but it lied. It lied. This is the only chart it can do. You know, it's a text-based chart. When I asked it to make it a colorful, prettier back pie chart, it wrote a description of the chart it would have generated if it could have generated bar charts. And I said, I don't see the chart. <laughs> and it said, I cannot actually send graphical charts or images through this chat. All right, well, maybe it's coming. And I asked for a text chart showing the rise and fall of tension chapter by chapter in the book. And it did that and it's pretty good. And it gave me an explanation of why, why I graphed it that way. So overall, in terms of its overall understanding of the story, it was excellent. It was, I mean, I am totally in awe of what it did. All right, so then I uploaded, a, so that book that I just looked at, that had about 15,000 words, this one that I uploaded here in another chat was around 60,000 words. It can go up to approximately 75,000 words I tested it out. I tried uploading an 84,000 word book and it didn't go. So this one, 60,000 words. Um, it And I asked it for a list of all the characters in the book. Uh, so first of all, it did get all 48 chapters because it was able to read the last line. So um, it got all, all 60,000 words. It was fully processed and understood. I made it, asked it for a list of characters in the book. It gave me a long list of characters for this book. Now, the previous book that I uploaded had been published on Amazon. And Claude is trained as of end of 2022, beginning of this year. So it could theoretically have scraped that book off of Amazon and been trained on it. This book here that I uploaded has not been published. So it's a book that exists on my computer. So, um, the information that it pulled, I'm reasonably certain it pulled from this book. Well, well, I've got some descriptions of it online and some sample chapters, but odds are that it it got it from the upload. Um, uh, especially because online, I don't think you can get it like in one place. It's like scattered all over the place. So I asked it for a scene by scene outline. Uh, it gave me a. Uh, well, my chapters are short, but it gave me a list of everything that happens in every chapter. If I wanted to, I could have it expand on, on a particular chapter. I asked it for the th key themes, and it's it got all the themes. Reality versus fiction, medieval world building, corruption and power, romance and relationships, um, morality and mortality. So it, it got all of them. So, yeah, so I am very, very impressed. Um, I have a write-up of it here at Metastellar. I'm going to have a link to that write-up in the description box below. And there's a summary of everything there, uh, plus the actual prompts that I used. So you can copy and paste them for yourself. All right. So um, what's my verdict? Claude AI is 
excellent. I am very, very impressed by what it can do. It is not perfect. I do expect it to keep getting better because all these AIs are getting better all the time. It is free. Uh, it's only in the US and only in the UK. You can upload a book of up to 75,000 words. If you have a longer work, I suggest splitting it up into parts, like part one, part two, part three, and then have it create a summary of each of those three parts. And then when you work with one part, you give it the summary of the other two parts so it understands the context of, of the part that you're working on. All right, so there you go. Um, I highly recommend that you check out Claude. It is free. So you should definitely check it out. It's very easy to get into. There's, it doesn't make you jump through any hoops. Uh, you don't have to sign up for a wait list or anything. Just go to the website and start using it. Um, very, very easy. Um, it's, it didn't need any special prompting or any weird, uh, imagine that you are this, that, or the other thing, just ask, ask it for what you want. And it just gives it to you. Um, I had a great time with it. If you want to, um, kind of experiment with slightly like better prompt, advanced prompts, you can provide some context. For example, you can say something like, uh, you're an experienced editor working with a major publisher for 20 years, and you're really good at editing manuscripts for best-selling authors and identifying the problems, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I didn't have to do any of that with this one, uh, with these prompts that I tested out today. It seemed to do a perfectly fine job without any of that kind of context setting. Um, but in general, it seems to help. Once it made a very obvious mistake, I had to test some grammar senses. So I gave it some senses and said, see if you can spot the grammatical error. And in one case, it missed it. Usually it was good. It was like 90, 95% again, again, accuracy with grammar. But in one case, it got the grammar uh, wrong. And I said, are you sure? And it looked at it again and said, I'm sorry. I missed the grammatical mistake. Here's what the sense should say. And it was right. Um, so... Uh, that's one thing that you might want to do. If you ask it to review for grammar, you can say, look at it again and see if there's anything you missed. Um, or, and that goes for any question that you ask it. Um, in general, the a best practice with AI these days is to provide some context. This is the role you're playing. You're an experienced editor. Um, this is a work of genre fiction, and my goal with the writing is to make it re as readable as possible, or my goal is to win a lot of awards, you know, the, to give it some kind of context of what space you're working in. Um, then um, uh, give it examples of answers, if you happen to have examples lying on around. I didn't have any examples to give it. It worked just fine. But if you wanted to give you something very specific, for example, if you wanted to generate mid-journey prompts, you might give it some examples of past mid-journey prompts. If you wanted to generate marketing blurbs for your book, you might want to give it some examples of the kind of marketing blurbs that you want to see. If you wanted to generate some social media uh, posts based on a book, you might give it examples of some social media posts that you like. So that kind of thing. Um, and then finally, uh, there's something called tree of thought reasoning. This is where you ask it to give you a few alternatives. So say, for example, you're stuck on what a character needs to do next in the context of this book. Uh, you can ask this with, with ChatGPT. ChatGPT is good at it. But with ChatGPT, you can't just upload the whole book, Right. So with Claude, you can say, here's the first five chapters of my book. Um, and uh, you got it? Okay, now here's where I want the character to go. But I'm stuck in what's going to happen in chapter six. Give me some ideas for ways to escalate the tension. And ChatGPT would give you, say, three or five ideas. And then you say, for each one, um, examine how your suggestion will fit in with my theme of blah, blah, blah. And then we'll go through and do that. And then you ask it, 
Now, given that analysis, review your original suggestions and modify them as necessary. And then we'll go back and we'll review its responses and improve them. And then you can either just pick the one you like, or you can say, now, based on your analysis, what is your final recommendation? Uh, so, so this kind of back and forth can dramatically improve the quality of responses for one of these large language models. So there's a little tip there based on the latest research. All right, so that's that's it for my Claude AI review. Check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if there's a way to get Code Interpreter to work for novels, let me know. Maybe, maybe there's a trick to doing it that I haven't seen yet. Um, again, let me know in the comments and I'll see you all next time. Oh, oh, um, I almost forgot. Uh, we do a free Friday every Friday. We read the first couple of chapters of the top free science fiction and fantasy books on Amazon. And we tell you what we, th what we think about it. So if you like that kind of stuff, subscribe to my channel and um, check back on Fridays for those videos and those articles. We also have a newsletter that you can sign up for, all sorts of good stuff. And um, we're a magazine that publishes free science fiction and fantasy and horror. So if you like reading free science fiction and fantasy, check it out. Um, we're always open to reprint submissions and our original submission cycle is in October and in March, we pay eight cents a word for new and original fiction. For reprints, the story has to have been published somewhere else first, but it could, it could be another magazine, it could be a newsletter, it could be on your own website. We don't pay for reprints, um, but uh, the odds of getting published are much higher and our reprints are eligible to be included in our annual anthologies. We're currently working on the second one. I just got the proof copy for it last week and we're currently making uh, final fixes and that should be published later on this month. All right, so that's it for the administrative stuff. Hope I didn't miss anything. I'll see you all guys on Friday. Bye-bye.